Welcome in to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in. Right now, we're taking a look at day 13 of Jaguars training camp practice. A big day for that Jaguars defense. We're going to look at everything that happened today, what went down. We're going to get through it quickly here, a little training camp notes session. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss a show on here. Really appreciate your support. You can follow me at Jordan DeLugo on Twitter for all the latest updates on your Jacksonville Jaguars and Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. The defense was the star of the show today without question. And there were a number of standouts on that side of the ball, particularly in the secondary. Before we get to those players, Talk about the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. He is the star of the show every time the Jaguars step on the field. Of course, uh, today was, I would argue, probably his worst outing of training camp. Nothing to be overly concerned about as he's coming off a really good performance against the Browns in their second preseason game on Friday night and another really solid outing. Um, on Monday night when the Jaguars practiced on on the field at TIAA Bank um, in front of family and friends under the lights. It was a little bit of a heightened atmosphere. So not a big concern here from Trevor Lawrence, but looking at what he did do today, had a few off-target throws, um, really struggled early on. I think, yeah, they started out, he started 4 of 13 in the team portion of drills, a couple off-target throws there. Um, you did have three drops today. Uh, Laquan Treadwell was guilty of one. Travis Etienne another. And then Christian Kirk dropped an easy one later in, in practice. Um, nothing overly egregious there. There were Those were all balls that needed to be hauled in. And then you did see Snoop Connor drop a pass from C.J. Beathard. That didn't impact Trevor Lawrence's numbers, obviously. But he finished the day 19 of 35, did Trevor Lawrence with um, three turnover-worthy throws. He was picked off by Rayshon Jenkins early in practice. Jenkins just made a great play on the ball. Um, Trevor probably should not have forced it in there and hung it up there a little bit too high. Had another one where Rayshon Jenkins should have easily intercepted a pass later on in practice, was not able to hold on to it, and then you saw on the final play, of the team portion of drills when the Jaguars were marching into the red zone. Trevor Lawrence threw it um, to the right side, threw it low, and Chris Claybrooks was able to uh, scoop the ball up and and get it before it hit the ground for an interception for himself. He's had a a good few days of practice here, has Chris Chris Claybrooks. So yeah, three turnover-worthy throws for Trevor. Um, Certainly the most that he's had in a practice so far. I will say, this was one of the longer, hotter, more humid, and just difficult practices to endure, certainly from a player's standpoint, but also from my perspective. Like, I was out there, the rest of the media out there, we were feeling it too. It was hot as hell. It was muggy. It was a long practice. Um, So, you know, these are some of those things that can pop up during training camp, Um, when you are you had a game on Friday, then you had a big practice on Monday. You get back out here Wednesday, and um, you've had a lot of intensity. Sometimes it's hard to keep that up for a full week. Um, I'm not overly concerned with what Trevor put out there because he has been so consistent throughout training camp. He's been accurate all over the field. He's been smart with the football He only had three turnover-worthy throws entering this practice. He had three today. So, I mean, he's still looking pretty damn good. uh, But obviously you'll want to see him rebound and the rest of the offense rebound. You want to get rid of the drops, uh, get rid of some of the mistakes, some of the uh, poor throws that Trevor threw today. And I have confidence they, they will rebound. But on the reverse side of the same coin, the Jaguars' defense was playing lights out. It's becoming incredibly difficult to complete passes down the field on Tyson Campbell's side. Shaquille Griffin is playing at a high level. 
Rayshon Jenkins is playing at a high level. Andre Sisco is playing at a high level. Heck, Trey Herndon and Xavier Crawford are both playing really well. And then when you have um, no contact, Darius Williams is a difficult person to complete passes against as well. So I think the secondary is really taking shape. It's really looking good on, um, on the back end for the Jaguars' defense. I think also having Foley Fatukasi up front combined with Roy Robertson Harris and Devon Hamilton in the middle is starting to really uh, wreak some havoc. I think they played really well against the Browns, and you've seen that continue into practice. Um, and of course, once you get the um, whatever formation you want to call it, third and long, uh, you're just trying to get pressure. Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen on the outside, and then Dwan Smoot and Arden Key in the middle. It is tough to deal with. It really is. Um, Rayshon Jenkins, I think, might be a candidate for not not across the entire NFL probably, but at least when you look at the Jaguars, maybe comeback player of the year, when you look at how good he was um, and reliable he was for the Chargers defense for several years, filling in for Derwin James and filling multiple other roles, Came in, was a captain last year, really struggled, though, um, once the regular season started. He's playing incredible football. I mean, consistently getting his hands on the football, uh, forced the fumble against the Browns, and Dearness Johnson is no slouch, the the running back who fumbled it. Rayshon Jenkins just made a great play. Um, And then looking at Tyson Campbell, he's playing out of his mind as well. Just so difficult to complete passes on his side of the field. One interesting note from Mike Caldwell, the Jaguars defensive coordinator today, he said that um, at at this point, between Tyson Campbell, um, Darius Williams, and Shaquille Griffin, they're going to be deployed on a matchup basis. Uh, Whoever feels most comfortable covering certain receivers throughout the year, they're going to be they're going to be matchup matchup dependent on how those players will align. Right now, you've seen Tyson Campbell mostly on the right side of the defense, Shaquille Griffin mostly on the left side. But um, Mike Caldwell confirmed that, you know, it's possible that Tyson Campbell will travel. It's possible Shaquille Griffin will travel, uh, or even Darius Williams. Just depends on the matchups. So it won't be super dogmatic, at least if if what Mike Caldwell said today is true, and holds true throughout the regular season. They'll probably be moving around a decent amount just based on those matchups once again. Uh, Ethan Waugh, the Jaguars' assistant general manager, spoke to the media for the first time today. I thought he was very insightful, um, concise, uh, but but informative as well. And I think one of the most interesting things that you heard, not only from him, but also special teams coach Heath, Heath Farwell, I just get this sense of of cohesiveness in the front office and in the coaching staff. Like Heath Farwell talked about today, if there's a player that he's really enjoying um, or, or, or really taking notice on special teams, he'll be able to communicate with Press Taylor or Mike Caldwell and Doug Peterson about, you know, maybe you need to try to get this guy some more looks on the offensive side so we can see can he contribute on special teams and offense because if he can do that, he can be a really valuable member of the team. And vice versa, like talking to Mike Caldwell, if there's a, a a defender on the roster that's making a big impact on special teams, Heath Farwell can go and ask Caldwell to get him some more looks. And then the, the reverse is happening, where if there's someone who's shining on the offensive or defensive side of the ball, the coordinators can go and talk to Heath Farwell and say, hey, can we get some looks for this guy Um, on special teams and see if he can make an impact for us here. So it's all kind of coming together cohesively in the coaching staff. And then what Ethan Waugh talked about was streamlining the process of of pro personnel, um, college scouting, and making sure that they are trying to find players that fit Doug Peterson and Mike Caldwell and Press Taylor's systems and schemes that they want to be running. I don't think you've necessarily had that around here for quite some time where you have a front office that is really focused on on getting players that fit um, a certain scheme and and streamlining the entire process. And, and Ethan Wall was a big part of 
um, altering and streamlining processes in San Francisco where he was before, it's clear that he's bringing that to Jacksonville as well and just a sense of focus and cohesion um, from the top down, from the front office to the coaching staff to the players. I think that is going to pay dividends. Um, Whether it's this year or in the long run, I really do think that's going to pay dividends for the Jaguars. Um, Taking a look at a few other notes here, I thought um, LaJuan Winningham continues to just impress the heck out of me, and he's not getting a lot of reps in training. I mean, excuse me, in the preseason games, he's not getting a lot of targets. Maybe they're trying to hide him so they can stash him on the practice squad because this guy just wins. He, he go, I mean, Winningham, fitting name for this guy. He goes out there, and every time, for the most part, that there's a contested catch situation or he has to go up and show strong hands and fight for the football, he's out there doing it. And uh, I just am so impressed by him. And I, I hope that there is some strategy to how they've been deploying him or, or the lack of deployment in the preseason, just trying to stash him on your practice squad and not letting other teams kind of uh, see what he has to offer. Ben Barch was with the ones for the first time today, entering his third year in the league out of St. John's College. Um, He he got got in there with the ones at left guard. And so you had in the middle there, Barch at left guard, Fortner at center, and, and of course, Brandon Sheriff at right guard. That was the first time that he has been in, in media availability. That's the first time that he has run with the ones that we have seen Doug Peterson has talked about that that battle between Ben Barch and Tyler Shatley being intense, being close. This is the first time we've actually seen action behind that when the media has been allowed to view what they're doing. Um, of course, Barch ended up uh, having a little issue, had to exit practice. He's fine. I think it was dealing with the heat, as all of us were. Several other players had to step out as well. But that kind of shows maybe they are starting to lean towards Ben Barch. And then they had Tyler Shatley working back up center. From what I've seen so far throughout Tyler Shatley's long career with the Jaguars and then just looking at a smaller sample size, what Shatley and Barch have done at guard during these training camp practices and preseason games, I kind of think that Shatley is a better center than a guard. Even though he's done both throughout his career, I think he's a better center than guard. And I think you might be seeing a runway cleared for Ben Barch to kind of eventually step into the starting lineup as the left guard. Uh, and Tyler Shatley being that versatile piece that can play anywhere um, as, a, as a backup at, at both guard spots and at center. Uh, that has not been confirmed. They say it's still a competition. Speaking of competition... Walker Little and Jawan Taylor are still trading off with the ones at right tackle. Um, It is unclear what the Jaguars are going to do there, and Press Taylor talked about it this morning. They don't feel any pressure to name a starter. They feel like either guy could go out there and start for them, and they would feel confident about that. Um, Would I feel confident about either player starting week one? Maybe not. I have more confidence in Walker Little personally. Um, Uh... Probably significantly more confidence in Walker Little. You just look at Jawan Taylor's track record with his inconsistent play, his penalties. I mean, his his first year in the league, he was third in the NFL in penalties for offensive tackles. Last year, he was at the very top in penalties. So I'd be clear in the runway for the younger and, in my opinion, more talented Walker Little to get into the starting lineup. But the Jaguars do not feel pressure to name a starter because they feel fine with both players. So we'll see how that goes and how that all plays out for them. Um, Terrell Adams did come up with a big sack today. You saw Trey Herndon make some big plays, Xavier Crawford as well. Uh, again, the defense had a really big day. Foley Fatu Kasi is really impressing. And when he was lined up against Jawan Taylor, it was ugly for Jawan Taylor, and that's another another glaring area that I've seen. Just Walker Little has been better in practice than Jawan Taylor, without question in my mind. So we will see how that plays out moving forward. We've got another practice on Thursday, August 18th, 
And then that'll lead us up to the Jaguars preseason week two matchup against the Steelers Saturday night in Jacksonville. Of course, it's the Jaguars' third preseason game. The the coaching staff did confirm there will be more game planning for this one, so that's something we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, It won't be like a full regular season game plan, but something to monitor, like are they more prepared? Do they look a little bit more, um, more like how they're going to look once the regular season kicks off? We'll monitor that, but we'll be back out at practice tomorrow, Thursday, August 18th, and uh, get you the news and notes from that. But that's going to wrap up this edition of our Jaguars training camp notebook. Thank you so much for tuning in, Duval. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. Follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on YouTube, and you can check GenJag.com for all the latest Jaguars news, analysis, and Duval gear.